nine watches, nine German watch brands and in total less than 15,000 euro. This is going to be my video for today and it's going to be a long video. Hello and welcome to Watchmaxi's watch videos. My name is Axel and I'm glad to have you on the show. Well, this video is going to be different from the videos I usually make. Um, since I don't have a thousand subscribers or more, I can't do real live streams. So what I'm trying to do here is to create a kind of live atmosphere by taking a pretty long video completely uncut. Which means um, you hear me searching for words, you may have little length in the video, but it's going to be live and uncut and it's um, probably issued as a premiere so we can have a live chat. I'm not quite sure if I can do it, if I do have the time to, to stay on the, uh, on the computer for an hour or two. So um, this is not a promise, it's just an option. What's this video about? Today I would like to present nine watches from nine different German watch brands as a kind of virtual collection suggestion. Um, I'm gonna split the nine watches and, and the nine watches in total will be around 15,000 euro in total. I'm gonna split this down in three sections. Section one will be three watches with a thousand euro max. The second section are three watches with 2000 euro max each. And the last one will be three watches with 3000 euro max each. Um, so the rule is nine watches, nine watch brands, three price categories, and within each category, no duplicate style and watches shouldn't be too similar in order to create a collection which is quite diversified and shows different styles, variants and is, is not too boring or too similar. I'd love to see your comments and your views and your suggestions if you like my, my selection, if you have different views and for you I would lift the limit of German watch brands so choose whatever you like but make sure you stay in the same price range and create a certain variety and not, um, as an example, three different uh, submariners, submariner styles. So uh, date, no date, um, GMT, whatever. So try to create a diversity. This is what I'm going to do now. And um, I start with the category German watch brands up to a thousand euro each. My first selection is a Lemus watch. It's the Lemus Aviator. The current uh, list price is 640 euro and current means May, June 2020. The lug width is 42 millimeter and the total thickness of the watch is 9.5 millimeter. The lug width is 20 millimeter and the lug to lug span is 51 millimeter. And that's for me is a real pity. The Aviator is a modern and classy interpretation of the classical Fliege watch Baumuster Type A. Unfortunately, with the lock to lock span of 51 mm, it is just a tick over my personal comfort zone. I feel it's a little bit too wide for me and my small wrist. I actually really regret it because it's a George's watch and I love it. Um, the watch has the Celita SW200-1 and has only a water resistance of 5 bar. On the front we have a AR coated flat uh, sapphire crystal and on the back we have a mineral crystal. The polished hands and Arabic barkers are applied and create a really interesting look on the face of the watch. Um, the hands, the little square markers as well as the top triangle are filled with luminous color and create a clear and easy to read 
design at night. The watch comes with a leather strap and has a push and pull crown, so no screw down crown. This particular watch is going to be presented in a more detailed video of about 8 minutes or so in the next days. So if you're interested, stay tuned, look into my future videos and you'll have a more detailed and deeper look into this particular one. Number two in my category up to 1000 euro is a watch brand which really divides collectors into lovers and haters. It's more the brand rather than the particular model I'm going to present and show. Steinhardt is a watch brand which often is referred to as a copy king because the complete Ocean series, the Ocean 1 series, has um, strong reference to the Rolex Submariner and um, it's, it's not a clone and it's, well, homage I wouldn't say, but it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty similar, no doubt about it, and uh, we don't have to discuss this. Um, I've read a couple of comments about poor quality, which I can't confirm. I've had several Steinhards and all have been of good quality, well designed, well made. In particular, as a reference to the mid to low range price area which Steinhards sells in. The watch I'm going to present today is the Steinhardt Ocean 2 Premium White. This is not a copy watch, no design, homage, whatever. It's a watch which is designed by Steinhardt and which has an own face and own design. I like it a lot and I had this version and it's nice on the wrist, but for Steinhardt in particular, there's one point why I sold all my Steinhards and that's the case shape. In particular, the horn shape. They are pretty straight and flat which makes the watch on my wrist slightly uncomfortable and too wide for my small wrist. I do know a couple of people who don't have that issue and for those Steinhardt is really an option to look into. The Ocean 2 Premium White comes in a 43 diameter millimeter case with a thickness of 13 millimeter and a lug width of 22 millimeter. The watch has um, alternatively, I think it's depending on availability, an ETA 2892 or a Celita SW300. So quite good movements and um, I would not would say nothing to claim, nothing to complain about. So sorry. The watch has a water resistance of 300 meter, 30 bar, and the front as well as the back, as well as the basil are made from sapphire crystal. The basil is luminous, which looks great at night, and both the hands as well as the markers, the indices and the basil have super luminover BGW9. The steel bracelet is well done and um, it's appropriate for the price range we're in. Oh, um, there is a plane just flying over. I I hope oh, I, I hope you can still hear me. Um, oh, that's the disadvantage of sitting on the balcony. I enjoy the sun. You enjoy my my view, but um, we have to stand planes. The watch, including the bracelet, wears 210 gram. And um, well, it's a, it's a well done watch, appropriate for the price tag and interesting for the design. I hope you like it. The third watch I'm going to present within the category up to a thousand euro is a watch brand which is pretty interesting if you're interested in German watch brand's history. The watch brand is Circular. Uh, I just put it, no, put it over there. So you can, here, here, I put it here, so you can read the name. Zirkula is a watch brand with a history, although it's pretty new in the market. Let me explain that. 
uh, the family Huber, H-U-B-E-R, had a um, trade business of brass and treasure and, and things like that. And uh, they started that business back in 1926. And after the Second World War, they decided not only to trade, but to create watches and launched a watch brand Circula in 1955. And of the 70s and the 80s, during the Quartz Crisis, um, they were too small to survive and they discontinued the watch production. In the year of 2016, a grandson of the original founder of the brand, also a person named Huber, H-U-B-E-R, relaunched the circular watch brand with new and fresh models. Pretty interesting. So in terms of the contemporary nowadays circular brand, it's a new one launched in 2016, but it was a relaunch of an old brand relaunched by the same family. It's, uh, if you like to see it like this, driven in the third generation with a certain break in between, unfortunately. But it's a watch bread with a history, all the time family owned, and it's really worth looking into it. Today I'm going to present, or I selected for my today's collection, the Circular Heritage Automatic in Blue. The current price tag is uh, 920 euro, and the watch is limited to 499 pieces. Normally I wouldn't pick a restricted and limited version of a watch into such a selection, but since Circular isn't well known, 499 pieces is not too limited. I would not expect that this watch is sold out pretty soon, and that's why I included it into my selection. The watch comes in a case of 41, diam 41 millimeter in diameter, and a thickness of 11.8 mm. The lug width is 20 mm and the lug to lug span is 48.5 mm, thus fitting even for smaller wrists. The sapphire is a, um, the, the front glass is a sapphire crystal and the dial is a blue sunburst dial which really makes the watch look great. Hands and markers have luminous color, fine, not necessarily to be expected with a dress watch, but good to have. But there's one point which really makes the watch stand out of my collection, and that's the movement. The movement is a PUW1661, and PUW stands for Pforzheimer Uhren Rohwerke, which is um, well. <laughs> now, now, now I'm get, getting to my to, to my language limits. Pforzheim is a watchmaking city in Germany, and Uhren Rohwerke means um, the basic movements of watches. So it's a historical movement, and circular build new old stock watches and new old stock movements from new old parts. So reassembled the old movements and pretty, pretty interesting. Um, I'd like you to go into the link below in the description, have a look at the brand. Pretty interesting. Currently they have um, clear design and style language. Um, I've talked to the, um, to the CEO of Circular and they gave me a hint that there's going to be um, another flavor within their portfolio towards uh, harvest end of the year and by then we agree that I get some watches and can have a review series of a couple of watches of theirs. So uh, I look forward to it and um, I hope so do you and we'll meet again on these videos later the year. So these were my three watches up to a thousand euro. Let's move to the second category, 2000 euro max. The first watch I selected is um, a watch brand from the middle of Germany. It's Turbi 
and I selected the Turbi Art Deco 43. What can I say about Turbi? Turbi is a watch known for good quality, um, dedicated service commitment, and two facts which I actually do like a lot. Most of their watches they offer in at least two, if not three, different case sizes. Um, for example, the Art Deco I selected for this video is available in 40 mm, 43, and 45. I picked the middle one, uh, although it's too big for me. Personally, I would choose the 40 mm, but it just shows that um, you may find the size of your watch without the need to choose a different style. Really nice, I like it. And secondly, Torbi has a long list of um, optional additional features such as um, movement upgrade, manual decorated movement, different um, case colors, quite a lot and it really upgrades the watch and if you have a look at the hand decorated movement they look gorgeous. Have a look at the website, greatly done. The Tobi Art Deco which I picked for today has a case diameter of 43 millimeter and a thickness of 9 millimeter talking case and 10.4 millimeter talking total thickness as the watch has a pretty domed sapphire crystal. Lug width is 22 millimeter and the lug to lug span is 50 millimeter and that's the reason why I would pick the smaller 40 millimeter version for my personal use. We have a hand bound movement with the Unitas 64 98-1 and the watch has a water resistance of 5 bars only. The dial is made from 925-ish silver, so a pretty nice look, different from what you usually get with a printed or colored or uh, other movements. Really nicely done and the indices and the case and the hands give a nice contrast to the silverish dial. Let's move to the summit, the peak, the middle of my video, number five of my selection, number three of the uh, 2000 euro block. It's a um, watch from Laco. Laco is one of the five historical producers of uh, typical Baumuster type A Flieger watches in uh, World War number two and they created a watch with the Laco Frankfurt GMT which is a really fresh modern and sporty interpretation of the Topic Flieger watches. The watch comes in a 43 mm diameter case and a thickness of 12.5 mm. The lug width is 20 mm and the lug to lug span is 50 mm. Within this watch we see a movement of the ETA 2893.2 with a water resistance of 200 meter or 20 bar. Oh, again a plane. Yeah, oh. It's getting later in the day and the planes are starting to fly. Sorry for that. The watch comes with an AR coated double dome sapphire crystal and it comes with two different straps, a black leather strap and the grey orange uh, textile strap. Pretty well done, I haven't seen a steel bracelet for this one and due to my, my wish to create a great variety in my selection I picked the grey version. This watch is also available as a black version. The hands, the indices and the outer ring are filled with luminous color, so easy to read at night. Uh, one point I would like to mention for that watch in particular and that's um, the GMT function. You see the GMT hand and the 24 hour markers on the outer ring. Um, the GMT hand can be set by the crown on the 4 o'clock position. The crown on the 2 o'clock position can move the outer ring. But if you move the outer ring you still just have one GMT time zone because you only have one 24-hour marker and one 24-hour hand. 
So um, you've got one GMT time zone, but you can set it on two different ways by moving the GMT hand and by moving the outer ring. So that's uh, one option too much if you want to put it this way. However, I think the two crowns look gorgeous. So the, the design is great. Function-wise, it's, uh, it's a bit over the top, but it looks great and it doesn't disturb. You don't have to use it. You can quickly set it without jeopardizing to set the time or the date wrongly. So let's, let's put it this way. It's okay, but it hasn't been really necessary. The, uh, oh, I, I, I forgot to mention the Tobi Art Deco is at 1,525 euro, sorry, and the Laco Frankfurt is at 1,650 euro currently price. Number six in my collection is a very special watch. It's the Mühle SAR Rescue Timer currently priced at 1950 euro on the steel bracelet. The watch has a diameter of 42 mm and a thickness of 13.5 mm which is pretty thick. However, it doesn't disturb at all because the form and the shape of the case and the bracelet makes the watch one of the most comfortable watches I've ever had. Nevertheless, I sold it because there's one point I didn't like and I come to that in a couple of seconds. The lug width is 20 mm and the movement is the Sedita SW200.1 and the watch comes with a water resistance of 100 bar or a thousand meter. The front crystal is a four millimeter thick sapphire crystal and the basil is a caoutchouc rubber bumper and the bracelet has these small caoutchouc rubber inlays which creates a very special look and design reduces the weight and makes the watch pretty pretty comfortable to wear hands and markers are generously filled with luminous color completely easy to read at night and um, that's a pretty pretty gorgeous watch if there wasn't one point the watch has a magnifying glass loop which is created and um, milled on the inner side of the sapphire crystal so the outer side is completely flat and the loop the magnifying glass is pretty small and you have to look straight from the top on the watch in order to see the date. If you look from a slightly different angle you won't be able to see it and it's difficult to read the time because the loop disturbs the recognition of the minute hand and to be honest I hated it. I really hated it. I couldn't get used to it. The watch was so smooth and comfortable on the wrist. Such a gorgeous watch. No sharp corners, no edges. You don't get caught anywhere. It's soft and smooth and it looks pretty awesome. And it's a unique look of the watch. But the loop was a killer for me. And since it is a design element of the watch, I didn't want to replace the sapphire crystal. So it had to go. It was, uh, I, I didn't have tears in my eyes, but it was really sad that I couldn't get used to it. And uh, it's, it's a pity. If, if you think you can't stand it, try it. It's a great watch, extremely comfortable and a nearly, nearly perfect everyday watch. However, close to 2000 euro, it's actually not a bargain. Okay, let's move to the third section, watches with a price tag of 3000 euro maximum. As you may know, I'm a big fan of Zinn watches and you may have wondered why I haven't had a Zinn in this collection yet. I thought a lot about that, which one I would like to pick. 
um, it should be an iconic Zin. It should be typical for Zin, and it should be a watch which is slightly different from the others I've chosen. It should be um, a watch fit for purpose in everyday use. So my initial thought was picking the 556. As you know, I have a couple of 556s. But then I thought, oh, maybe there's something different. Then I considered the 103, but um, no, I went for something completely different. It's not the 903, which would be a, a very typical, iconic and outstanding watch. No, I took a new one. I, I decided to pick the Zin U50 and I picked it for a couple of reasons. I used the standard version with the tegumented bezel, not the PVD covered bezel, not the black case, not the tegumented case, the standard one on a steel bracelet at a price tag of 2170 euro. The watch comes in a 41 diameter case and a thickness of 11.1 millimeter, which is just about the thickness of a dress watch. And that's a really heavy duty diver. Great, I like it. The lug width is 20 millimeter, and as a movement we see the Celita SW300-1. The watch is water resistant up to 500 meter 50 bars and has a weight of 74 grams without the bracelet. The watch is made from U-boat steel like the bigger brother, the U1, has a tegumented basal which makes it pretty scratch resistant. The hands, the markers are filled with luminous colors. I haven't seen the watch in the dark, so I don't know how bright the watch is, but I would expect it follows the same approach like the U1. Uh, luminous power, which is visible all night. However, it's not a torch. It's not extremely bright, but extremely long lasting, which allows the watch, which allows to read the watch throughout the whole night. Why did I select the U1? Well, I, I picked this watch out of a couple of reasons. Firstly, the design of the U1 and the U50 is iconic. It's, it's unique, it's not copied by any other brand. And you love it, you hate it, but you recognize it. You see the watch and you know it's a Zin, it's a U1 or now a U50. However, the U1 is a really big, thick and heavy watch. I love it, but despite I love it, I have to get used to it when, I, when it's on the wrist. I need about half a day to get used to the weight, the head heaviness and, and this kind of stuff. Today I've got the um, UX Sunsi bar, which is similar to it, so I can wear it, but I have to get used to it and I, I wouldn't wear it in any situation. And the U50 creates a watch with a similar style but a completely different comfort approach. It's thinner, lighter, smaller, so it can be on the wrist as an everyday watch without disturbing, without being too heavy, but still presenting this unique design. If you're used to the U1 and love the U1, the U50 may appear like a toy watch or a, a kid's watch or a lady's watch, which it is not. It's a full-fledged diver's watch, just a little bit smaller, lighter and, and thinner. So if the U1 was too thick, too heavy for you, have a look at the U50. It's really great and I appreciate that then followed the requests of a couple of their customers to create smaller and lighter watches. Great thing to do and great watch, absolutely. The last but one watch in my today's selection is a watch brand which German collectors didn't have on the radar as a watch brand. For the international audience, I'm not quite sure if you may understand it or not. It's the watch brand Wempe, W-E-M-P-E, -E, Wempe. And Wempe is a, is a chain of watch traders. So if you go to the inner city, you see a lot of these jeweliers, Wempe and, and these kind of stuff. So you, you won't immediately identify Wempe as a 
watch maker or watch brand but as a jewelry jeweler and uh, for me the the trader's approach is more present than the watchmaker's approach however they make actually really really great watches and Wempe was the second brand out of my today's selection which belonged to the historical Flieger Baumuster Type A makers in the Second World War. So long history of making watches and they do make great watches. Two of their lines, Chronometerwerke and Zeitmeister are chronometer certified. And for today's selection I picked the Wempe Zeitmeister classic Moonface full calendar. Everything in it completely full-fledged nice watch the case is fully polished the watch has a current price tag of 2500 euro and comes in a case with 42 millimeter in diameter and a thickness of 14.1 millimeter I haven't found a luck with or a luck to luck span and since 42 millimeter can cater with both 20 millimeter and 22 I don't want to guess I have no clue what the luck width is, but looking at the picture, the proportions of the watch are fine, it fits, so um, irrespective of the actual size, uh, the watch looks great. As a movement, we've got the ETA 2829-A2, and the watch has a water resistance of 5 bar. We've got, for sure, uh, of course, a sapphire crystal. The case is fully polished, so are the applied indices and the hands. We have also available a version with a white dial. However, I felt that the contrast between the polished hands and the white dial is significantly smaller than the black dial, so I decided to go for the black dial just for the purpose of better legibility. The last watch in my today's selection is the Damasco DC66. Um, the watch has a price tag of 2260 euro without the bracelet but I decided to add the bracelet because the bracelet is a really gorgeous manufactory made bracelet of high quality and an own design easy to identify as a Damasco bracelet so I choose the, the bigger package and the bigger package has a price tag of 2890 euro. The watch comes in a case of 42 millimeter in diameter. The bezel adds another 1.8 millimeter so on the bezel edge the uh, it was up today it's a noise in the street so including bezel the watch has a diameter of 43.8 millimeter thickness is 13.9 and the lug width is 22 millimeter coming to the movement i've noticed in my previous videos i wasn't able to properly pronounce 7750 I always said 70, 70, 50. No, I do know the figures in English. It's 77, 50 and the top version. The watch has a water resistance of 10 bars, 100 meter, and has a hardened stainless steel case. Um, the hardness is not just a coating, but it's a certain depth of the case which is hardened. So you won't have dings and dangs. The case as such is hardened and makes it pretty scratch resistant and it's a nice feature. I do like it and it comes automatically with the watch so you don't have to extra order. The watch has a weight of 103 grams without the bracelet and the bezel itself comes in two different options. You can have the bezel with a 1, 2, 11 marker as a second time zone or the standard bezel 5 to 55 for time measurements. The bezel can be turned uh, 
two-directional, so it's not a diver's watch, but more a Flieger watch. But it's a pretty nice watch and um, I, I like it. It's a slightly crowded dial, um, many to see on the dial, but as I wanted to have a big variety in the watches I present, I thought this watch should be in. The watch has a screw down crown, so it's uh, safe to use and easy to use. Well, that has been my collections for today. I hope you liked it. If so, leave a comment, let's discuss. And if you subscribe to my channel, you can support me and maybe I can do a live stream one day and we can have a direct exchange. Until then, cheers, Axel.